Hi guys, this is Great Day with an Earth Root Enclave Hard Mode Guide. This is a dungeon that our group has been working on for quite a while. Cleared the hard modes multiple times, but we're still working on the trifecta. Uh, for our group composition today, we have two damage dealers and one healer, and that's especially important on this first boss because there's a lot of outgoing damage. Um, I, this is from the tank POVs, uh, but I will also be going over some of the mechanics for the damage dealers as well. On my tank bar, you'll see that I'm running Echoing Vigor, and that's because I'm running PA in this fight. On my front bar, I also have uh, Rapids, which will be especially important for the hide phases. And then I'm also running Crushing Shock on my back bar because there's a number of interrupts to get. This fight is broken up into several phases, with burn phases followed by a hide phase, followed by more burn, and then finally, once the boss gets down to execute, it becomes a stack and burn fight. Positioning on this fight is very important, and we typically go with a square or diamond formation for everybody, and that's because we don't want to stack with some of the mechanics that we'll start to see in just a minute. Now, when we first pull the boss, uh, at first it's just going to be the boss in the arena. He does a number of mechanics here. One is his heavy, which does a heal absorption or soul tear onto the tank. This has to be healed through, and while it's on you, you do have an increase of damage taken as well. He also does a stomp, and that starts this kite mechanic. This is why we use the square or diamond formation with both our DDs, our healer, and the tank. Uh, here we see the first hide phase. Here it's important to get behind the rocks as quickly as possible. There will be two rocks to hide behind. Now the boss also does an overhead slam when he's not doing this hide phase. That overhead slam does a large AOE that needs to be either blocked or rolled out of as soon as possible. Now after the first hide phase, we see the stone atronachs around the arena waking up. At this point, it's very important for the DDs to focus these down. They do a number of mechanics, including a stomp uh, that does a lot of outgoing damage to everybody, as well as this tether that we can see right now. The tether will gradually slow somebody and eventually turn them into stone unless they break free once they are in stone. It's important that this gets interrupted as soon as possible. If it's not interrupted, then when somebody turns into stone, they're going to get a lot of increased damage, both from the stomp of the stone atronach, uh, as well as from the kite mechanic and the slam mechanic. So during this phase, we found that it was important to have, again, uh, damage dealers be in that triangle, or excuse me, that square or diamond formation around the stone atronox, but have both focusing on the same one. The reason being that we want to get those burned down as quickly as possible, and if we split up between multiple stone atronox, then it also splits the focus of the healer. Now as the tank, you're still dealing with the outgoing damage from the boss, you're still dealing with the heal absorption or soul tear mechanic, you're still dealing with the kite as well. So for this, um, you want to get a taunt on the both, the, of course, the main boss, but also the stone atronox as soon as possible, uh, and stay on those interrupts. But when you get that soul tear or heal absorption mechanic, I like to tuck my back into the heals that are around the damage dealers. That way you can get healed out of that soul tear mechanic faster um, and get that debuff off of you. Now this is the second burn phase. This is the second time that there are Atronachs in the arena, um, and then of course the boss will get burned down to about 30% health. This is the last time that the damage dealers are going to focus the stone Atronachs. Once we get through the last hide phase at 30%, and uh, finish that hide phase and he goes into execute, at that point it's important that we just stack and burn, but still stay in those um, square or diamond formations around the boss. The reason being that in Execute, we have an added mechanic where there's basically a constant outgoing damage from a whirlwind of stone and debris around the boss. At that point, there's so much outgoing damage that if we split up to go and focus the stone Atronox, it's very likely that somebody is going to die. So the faster that we can finish him and burn him through that Execute phase, the better off we're all going to be. During this phase, uh, the healer will generally save a barrier, and I will generally save a warhorn, um, so that when we start the execute phase, we have both of those things available. Uh, you can see I just died here, I'm waiting until the first explosion, then I get up, use those rapids to get behind the rocks as quickly as possible, and then right as soon as that phase starts, we hit the warhorn, um, use the barrier, and start the execute phase. During this phase, I will focus on interrupting as well as staying out of the kite mechanic and dealing with that heal absorption that goes on right now. Um, I tend to stay on the interrupts because the longer that the healer can focus on just the healing aspects of it, the more likely it is that we're going to be able to successfully complete this boss. 
So that's the first boss and now we'll head on over to the second boss and go over some of the mechanics that we're going to see there as well. So with the second boss, it is by far the easiest boss of the dungeon. Um, it again is one of those phased fights where the boss will uh, go into a split phase. Um, but this time, instead of becoming invulnerable, there's just shades that need to get burned down. The difference between the hard mode and the not hard mode, from what we can tell, just seems to be an addition of multiple adds. Um, so some important mechanics here. Uh, there are going to be fawns in the boss fight as well as in um, as well as what we can see here. The fawns, if they're not burned down and focused quickly enough, will go into a tree. And as you can see, there's a fawn in the tree in the back. It's currently spitting out the red balls that are doing damage to everybody in the group. If a fawn goes into a tree, that tree needs to be burned down, then the fawn will pop back out, and then the fawn needs to be focused down again. In hard mode, fawns will come out in the boss fight as well. Those fawns need to be focused uh, so that they can get burned down and make sure that they don't go into a tree, which will just prolong the fight. There's also going to be a root mechanic that comes out from the boss, and we'll see that in just a second with some of these tree sentinels as well. When the boss is doing her root mechanic, there are three lines of roots that come out. Those roots put a ramping dot onto whoever gets hit by them. Um, generally, as a tank, I can take up to about six without my healer wanting to absolutely curse me out. Uh, after that, it really gets to be pretty dicey and it's pretty likely that I'm going to die. The more roots that you can avoid, the better off you're going to be, especially for damage dealers or the healer. So right here we can see that little fiery dot, there's those roots going out, I get hit by it again, and we can see that little fiery dot is getting the additional stacks on it. This will be a constant mechanic in the boss fight. Now there's also going to be some additional adds in the boss fight, and we'll go over positioning once we get into the room in just a second. But when those adds die, those adds will actually leave a um, root mess on the ground, and that is a constant root knot that will stay present uh, throughout the fight. So it's important that you stay out of that, and you, it's also important that we position that so that it's not going to get in the way of the fight as we continue. So what we do here is when we start the fight, I like to pull her over to the corner, and that's in order to position those roots going forward. Um, this is the first root mechanic. It's again putting that dot out, uh, again trying to avoid that damage as much as possible. Here we have the first fawn. Um, that'll get focused down by the damage dealers, burned down quickly so that it can't go into a tree. Here we can see the adds starting to spawn. We've got a bear and then three senches. It's important that these get chained in, stacked in one place, and then we focus those before we go and focus down the shade so we can see approving. Those are the roots that will stay present in the arena for the rest of the fight. Um, and that's why the positioning on this phase is very important. Once those adds get burned down, they leave those behind, and they never go away. And if you stand in them, they do a lot of damage. Now with the shades, we again found that it was important for all of the damage dealers to focus on one shade at a time. If the DDs split go to different uh, shades, and even as the tank, because they're doing constant heavies and constant damage from the roots, um, it's very likely that people are going to die because the heals are going to be split. Now when one of these shades die, they also do either a soul tear or knockback mechanic, so it's important to block that so that you can avoid that damage as much as possible. Um, the soul tear is pretty easy to heal through, but the knockback can be very frustrating, uh, and so it's important that you block. Again, we have another fawn. Here's the ad spawning. I'll chain them in as quickly as possible so that when those adds die and the root knots come out, they're positioned around the arena. We have one more shade phase here. Um, after this last shade phase, at this point she'll be in execute. Once she's in execute, we typically ignore adds, ignore the fawn, and just focus the boss down as much as possible. Again, it's a pretty easy mechanics. Keep on watching out for those roots that are around your feet. Keep on focusing down the adds, um, and just make sure that everything dies as quickly as possible so that you don't prolong the fight unnecessarily. If you do get hit by a lot of roots, uh, which I, again, tend to as the tank, um, you're going to want to make sure that you're letting your healer know uh, so that if they need to, they can focus down some of those heals. Um, again, any more than probably six of the stacking uh, fire dots on the tank, you're probably going to have a bad time. And I would say that 
uh, for damage dealers any more than probably two or three, you're probably going to be having a pretty bad time as well. Now in the last boss, there's a number of other mechanics that need to be dealt with in the hard mode that aren't as bad in the uh, regular vet mode, but they are still present. So this again is another phased fight. First, you're going to be fighting the person, then he turns into a bear, then back into a person, back into a bear. Um, while he is a person, the mechanics are pretty straightforward. Uh, he does a large wind-up heavy that needs to be blocked. He's going to summon uh, stone pillars around the room that will eventually blow up. And then he'll also summon a conduit that needs to get focused down. In later phases of the fight, he'll also do sort of a call lightning mechanic that starts lightning AoEs radiating out from him. DDs just need to stay away from that. So here we can see we have our first pillar that he's blowing up now. It's important that right as the pillars blow up that you roll, because if you don't roll the debris coming off of those, with more than two pillars, number one, it's going to hurt a lot and it's probably going to kill you. Uh, number two, it also puts a dot on you that can be very difficult to heal through, especially with the other mechanics. There's also a number of wolves that will target the damage dealers and healer. Those need to be blocked. You can also occasionally roll to get out of those as well. But they will target somebody, they will explode, and it's important that you don't stack together because if you stack, um, those are going to stack as well and they're going to die. Now with the bear, uh, again, we still have the conduits. We typically have one DD go and focus the conduit while the other one stays on the boss. With the bear, the most dangerous mechanic that we'll do for the tank is a cone that's about to start right away. So with this cone mechanic, if I don't have a magma shell, or if the healer is not focusing me, or if I'm not using immovable, then that cone is going to do a lot of damage. Later in the fight, you'll actually see me die to a cone. Um, but typically what I'll do is I'll use a magma shell for the first one. Uh, now I'm using immovable for the second. There's also going to be the pillars around the room, but the bear will charge at somebody and it will take those down. So typically after a cone, we'll have a charge mechanic right after, I try to line up the bear so that it will take down as many of those stone pillars as possible. Any stone pillars that do not get burned down uh, will immediately blow up, so it's important again to roll that debris and make sure that we are um, staying out of that as much as we can. Uh, so there I just died to the cone. You'll see there's also a conduit on me as well that needs to get focused down. He's going to charge now. He charges to the furthest person. Um, as the charge ends, it's important to roll dodge out of him, otherwise you're going to die. Here's the rocks blowing up, debris goes out. Again, if you don't roll dodge that right as it blows up, uh, you are going to get a nasty dot on you. Um, but the good news is, is that the roll dodge window on that is very forgiving. So here he's about to turn back into a person. Uh, once he's a person, again, most dangerous mechanic for a tank here is the big wind up heavy. Um, but it's also important to focus on positioning. He's summoning new rocks, and we're going to have a pretty small window of space where we're going to be safe from these AoEs that uh, grow and explode. So if you're not careful with your positioning, it's likely that he could be placed into an AoE, and then when he goes to blow them up, you could be facing a lot of damage or in a situation where you're stuck in sort of a Venn diagram that's hard to live through. Um, so we try to stay out of those AoEs, uh, if you can't stay out of the AoE, it's important to roll dodge right at just the right time to try to avoid it. Otherwise, you're probably going to die. Now, once he gets burned down to about 20%, um, this is that radiating lightning mechanic, but once he gets burned down to 20%, he'll turn back into a bear, and his health will go back up to 40%. Now, here we're in the execute phase. He's going to do another conduit, but we don't go to it right away, and that's because there's going to be this heal check mechanic right now. You'll see that there's a lot of lightning falling out of the sky. If we're not together during this heal check mechanic, as a tank, you can survive it on your own. Everybody else, if you're not in the heals, you're going to die. So here, I've positioned him so that uh, we can get the charge through some of those rocks. Make sure, here's the heal check mechanic again. Again, very important that we stay in those AoE heals, have those heals going out, and stay together so that we're not in a situation where there's going to be that constant damage. We do one more charge, and from here, if he charges again, we just generally hold the boss and uh, focus the charge into the wall. That's because we want to keep him as stationary as possible um, and get him burned down. Here we have another cone, and as you'll see, I die again. But at this point, his health is low enough. DDs can just focus him down. If he charges, we'll put him into the wall, but that's the fight. 
So I hope this guide is helpful, um, and good luck everybody. It's a fun fight once you get the hang of it. So happy dungeoning everyone.